My name's Pete Woods, you're watching Hexham TV. Who are you? I'm Helen and I'm the Audience and Sales Manager here at the Queen's Hall. Helen, um, we've got an exhibition on here, the latest exhibition at the Queen's Hall. Tell me what it's about. So this is all the artwork from the local A-level students from Queen Elizabeth High School and uh, they're showcasing their amazing artwork that will form part of their A-levels and it's just absolutely beautiful. We've been so impressed by the sheer talent that all the, all the artists have and the level of professionalism as well that they use to sort of put up this amazing exhibition. And it's fantastic for the Queen's Hall to give um, local young people an opportunity, one, to show off their art, but also to curate it and to hang it which yeah. is a real skill in itself, isn't it? And be involved in that process. Exactly. So they've been working with some of our technicians, but actually they've said that the, the students just didn't need a huge amount of gui guidance. They knew what would work, where it would work, which pieces would work best next to other ones. So the whole thing has just been at a really high professional standard. So, yeah, we, we, it was very little involvement from us. But it's important, isn't it, to show different styles of art, different uh, ideas, different mm -hmm. concepts that the students have been working on. And walking around the exhibition, it's amazing the variety of art and the concept work that's taken place, everything from film to, to um, photography to oil painting, you know, yeah. all sorts. Yeah, so there's beautiful photography, some here. There's an amazing pot downstairs, which reminds me a little bit of Grace and Perry's style pottery, um, to really beautiful, intricate paintings and some works that's a bit more conceptual and a bit different. So there's all types of genres from all types of mediums here. So you'd encourage people to come along and uh, have a look around the exhibition, which is on the ground floor and the first floor. That's right, yeah. Come along, it's free. Um, come and take your time, have a look at everything, because these are the sort of the next, the next generation artists. So um, definitely come and have a look. I'd highly recommend it. And it's also inspiring, isn't it, to, to young people who perhaps are thinking of studying art or photography, um, create, being in the creative industries themselves, to see the sort of high standard that can be produced by sort of very young people early in their careers at the high school. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a credit to our local high school here and the teachers that are there because the standard is just so high that this is the type of thing you can be expected to do at our sixth form, which is just amazing. So um, if you're interested in sort of learning a bit more about art or interested in doing that as your A-level, come and have a look see what's on, see what you can get involved with in our, in our local school. Helen, thank you very much for talking to Hexham TV. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jessie, I'm an ex-art student from QE, and uh, these are my paintings. So tell us about your paintings, Jessie. Uh, well, this first one is an oil paint on canvas piece that I did of my friend James. It was a piece that I worked from uh, photography that we did in the school's dark room. I used candlelight to create these quite dramatic shadows on the, on the face. And um, it was just quite a, an experimentation with sort of the intensity of eye contact and uh, light and shadow. <laughs> How long does it take to produce? Oh gosh, um, probably, well, it took at least a couple of weeks. I don't know the amount in, of time in hours exactly. I'd work on it from three to five hours each day, kind of um, here and there. So probably over the course of a couple of weeks it took me to create. <laughs> and are you pleased with the outcome? Yeah, definitely. It was the first large scale oil painting that I'd done. Uh, so I was very happy with how it turned out. <laughs> So, how did you plan what you were going to do? How did you come up with the idea initially? Initially it was from sketchbook work where I sort of was experimenting with illustrating the structure of faces and how light interacts with the shapes and how that casts different shadows. And uh, I collected several images of um, just quite intense direct light in, in dark spaces and how that sort of changed how you would see the face 
And um, from that, I would, I would collect images, I would do my own sketches, and then sort of work towards working with photography and creating my own photography for this piece, and then using that to translate into paint. <laughs> And how did James feel about uh, the outcome? <laughs> I think he didn't realise quite how big the painting was going to be and was a little bit shocked when he saw it, but he was <laughs> quite impressed and very happy with it. But, um, yeah, I, I think he also wasn't expecting it to be as much of a close-up as it was, but um, yeah, he was, he was very flattered. <laughs> so tell us about your second piece, very different piece. Yes, this one was a large-scale charcoal piece that I did uh, did before this one, actually. I think this was from uh, the first year of A-levels. And um, uh, the topic I was looking at was a, like, a little bit edgier. It was uh, sort of to do with violence and things like that. But also, once again, faces. It was a sort of what I was, what I was very much interested in. Um, but it was the first time that I'd, once again, the sort of first time that I'd used charcoal for an extended piece. I'd only ever used it for quick rough sketches because I didn't quite understand how to use it and also the messiness I found quite difficult to control. But um, after sort of being tutored and taught about how to use charcoal pro properly, it um, made it a lot easier. But I actually used a um, bamboo stick with a piece of charcoal on the end to draw it. So the, the, the piece was on the floor and I would use this long charcoal stick to like do it from a distance which would make the movements much looser and freer and then I would go back into it and build it up in layers. <laughs> was that your own idea or? No that was uh, my teacher Miss Purrett taught me about um, sort of charcoal is a looser medium and to loosen me up a bit she made me use the longer stick so that I wasn't as um, like like focused and fixated on making it look perfect the first time round and just getting the general shapes and making the piece a lot looser and have a lot more energy. <laughs> and so is this from a, a real person or from a photograph? Or? Yeah, it's, that's actually a photograph of me. <laughs> I used it for, uh, for my own... Yeah, I, I just did some photography of myself just because it was a... Um, it was, I think it was during, it might have been during lockdown actually that I took those photos, which was why I obviously didn't have access to any models for it. But um, yeah, so it's another thing from a, from a photograph that I took. Yeah. And tell me about your third piece. Yeah, this was my final piece for A-levels. Um, it was a photograph that I took of my two little brothers in a... Um, basement bar in Edinburgh I think it was it was either Edinburgh or London and um, it was just the like the restaurant bar itself had such lovely colors it was a really well as you can see the sort of colors it was these lovely like warm browns and blues and it there was just so much brilliant texture in the photograph and such wonderful like the proportions of the room and everything were just really lovely so I wanted to sort of uh, capture that in a painting but um, yeah I think this sort of the theme of the latter half of A-levels when I did this was more to do with uh, sort of memories and like capturing moments and things like that and this was a rare moment where my brothers weren't fighting with each other so it felt like quite a, a poignant um, a poignant moment. <laughs> And you have another piece which is in a different medium. I do, I do, yeah, I've got a lot of stuff. But um, this I made as a artist response to Grayson Perry. It was, um, <laughs> it was a piece that was only supposed to take me a, a week or two to complete and it ended up taking about six months between actually creating it and having a couple of failed attempts where it collapsed and um, then having to have it, have time for it to dry and actually carve out the, um, the imagery in it and glaze it and all that. And it just, it took a very long time, but it was very rewarding. <laughs> and um, what, what, what do the words say? What, 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 what are you trying to get across with this piece? So this piece was uh, very much dedicated to uh, my childhood friend Isabel she is I've been friends she's the person I've been friends with for the longest and um, 
it was just sort of documenting all of these little adventures that we'd had together. And um, it was very much about coming of age and the sort of childhood connections and things like that. So the writing is pieces of writing that I did about her. It's, it's not really poetry, but it's kind of that sort of, just, just sort of stream of consciousness talking about days out we've had or things that I've observed about her personality and these little quirks that make her who she is. And that's what I love about her. So that's what that piece was about. <laughs> and how difficult is it to get the lettering on a piece like that? Oh, quite difficult. I used a um, quite fine uh, ceramic tool and I actually just dotted the words in uh, because if you try and like um, sort of scrape it, it, it's quite difficult to get the, the words to wow. look like words. So it took quite wow. a while. <laughs> wow. That's an amazing piece. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So tell me um, some fantastic pieces that you've got in the exhibition here at the Queen's Hall. What, what are you doing now? What do you plan to do? Um, I've just finished my art foundation at Newcastle College and in September I'm going on to a painting and printmaking course at Glasgow School of Art, which is very exciting. So I've <laughs> got that to look forward to. Well, it's great to have um, your exhibits here on show in Queen's Hall and uh, congratulations on um, going to Glasgow in the future. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Eliza Strassheim um, and I'm a, a, well, a student who was going to Queen Elizabeth High School last year and just completed my um, A-levels there before doing an art foundation at Newcastle College this year that I've just finished. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Gosh, so it's been a really uh, difficult time to be a student. Um, was this work here that you've completed, was this completed during COVID? Yes, it was. So this was done during my last year of sixth form, so year 13, and it was for the final project of my A-level fine art course there at Queen Elizabeth High School. And um, yeah, so this was just sort of at the tail end of COVID. So I think we just finished sort of having restrictions in like the early 2022, I think it was that around that time. But this is all based on a project um, about isolation. So it was very much influenced by the sort of COVID-19 pandemic and the way that that um, impacted adolescents and people's coming of age. <laughs> So, who is the subject of the piece? Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, this is a self-portrait, um, and it was taken from a reference picture that I photographed, uh, basically my face against sort of like a, a road marking in the middle of a motorway. <laughs> um, um, don't try this at home. Don't try it at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was basically meant to be, I w what I was aiming to do across the project was sort of show the vulnerability of feeling isolated and lonely and I, th and I thought I really wanted to finish it with an image where someone was vulnerable or in a position that sort of meant that they were in danger of in some way and sort of to what I like to do within my work even during like art foundation is sort of create very obvious things which symbolize human feeling even if that means using images that are quite like intense so like animal mouths and that kind of thing so I think this is definitely me stretching out into that during my um, A-level sort of final piece, which is what this is, yeah. <laughs> and um, apart from the original pose, which was probably quite difficult, in terms of producing the work, what difficulties did you have in sort of actually getting the work onto canvas? Oh, it was quite um, trial and error. So it was, um, I, I kind of experimented a little bit during the early stages of painting it because rather than use like a sort of light ground colour, I ended up using quite a dark ground colour, which is kind of like the base that you use to sort of draw and paint into when you're painting an image. So I'd use the dark grey one because I thought it would go with the colour of the road. Um, but actually it kind of meant that it was quite difficult to create contrast between like light and dark. So as you can see here, sort of like in the high points of the face, it's still quite flat in a way because I used that dark grey ground colour. So that was sort of something I wasn't keen on when I finished the painting. But I kind of, it's sort of grown on me because I think it's sort of created contrast in like the metal of the jewellery and the paint on the road. So yeah, that was sort of one of the challenges of painting it. But then also like um, keeping up scratch of detail, like I used coloured pencil on some of the final touches of it. Um, that was sort of 
one of the decisions I made way later on in the process, which wasn't really part of it. Um, yeah, that was kind of it. <laughs> and um, have, have you, I know the pieces have been displayed at, um, at QE at the high school, but has, has your piece been displayed elsewhere or is, is this the first exhibition that you've uh, used it in? This is the first exhibition I think that this has been used in, which is very exciting. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, we've just, um, it, it's really nice though because we've just finished having our um, Art Foundation exhibition at Newcastle College in the Mandela building there and that's from both me and Jessie's like um, that's a sort of a portfolio of the work that we've done during our time on that course so it's it's really nice coming back to this though and having this be sort of a first stage of the way that the works evolved so going from being at A level to you know a foundation diploma it's really interesting seeing the way that we've continued to use like subject matter or what we've changed how we've changed things yeah. And is this a theme that you think you will continue with? You know, the sort of vulnerability and the, you know, sort of in difficult, stressful sort of situations, trying to sort of show those sort of feelings? I think so, yeah. Because, you know, it, it, it informed so much the context of the work. Like, all of the sort of work during this exhibition has been, like, post-lockdown, post not quite post-Covid, <laughs> but during that sort of period where, you know, the context of the way we learned at school and the way that we were interacting with our teachers behind, like on these courses, um, was impacted by Covid, which I think has impacted, you know, feelings involving vulnerability and loneliness and, you know, that, that the way that you are informs so much of the process at the time and I think sort of the context determines meaning in a way so I think yeah it would go on to inform quite a bit of my work but it's it's been nice coming back to this sort of quite emotional beginning I think definitely. <laughs> and what, what do you hope to go on and do after your degree? Um, well my degree I in September I start an English degree at University of Exeter but I do hope to return to art at some point in my career um, career, <laughs> um, and but I think um, possibly journalism, um, publicity. I'm really interested in writing, um, which is something I've explored a bit during my foundation course. Um, but I think that's sort of the path that I'm possibly going to go on. But you can never tell. <laughs> so yeah. Well, it's a wonderful piece, and it's great to see it here at Queen's Hall in Hexham. And uh, thanks very much for talking to Hexham TV. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, my name's William Pym. I'm the, one of the art teachers at the Queen Elizabeth High School. I teach photography uh, and some art and some graphics. And so I'm really pleased because I'm standing here amongst our annual exhibition at Queen's Hall Arts and uh, very grateful for them giving us the opportunity to show this year. Uh, and it's a fantastic show, but I'm slightly biased, I think. What, um, what would you say about some of the art that people can see if they come to the exhibition? Well, it's a fantastic opportunity, I think, to see what a, a young people um, can create. Uh, these young people are at the beginning of, of very creative careers. We send more young people to foundation studies in Newcastle than I think any other school in the Northeast. And they then go on to degrees across the country uh, and even abroad, which is fantastic. So these are kind of the end of one thing, the end of their A-level studies, these are their final pieces for their exams, but also it's the start of something, for, of something really incredible and creative. And whether or not they go into careers in the arts or they take other paths, I think they take with them something of the skill in making art, but also the idea of creating uh, ideas and, and artwork uh, for the world, which is a fantastic opportunity. And the creative industries works on a number of different levels, doesn't it? It works on a very personal level and it's really fantastic to sort of work on something and see something you've created and uh, be engrossed in creating it. Um, but also the creative industries are incredible industries for the country, aren't they? In terms of, you know, earning income, creating businesses exports, exhibitions, film, television, all sorts. Exactly, and they're all, I mean, it, 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 I, mean I can't quote you the, the exact stats, but in terms of it being a sector in the British economy, it's growing more, it's providing more tax income, it's employing more people, and it's employing more people in real, 
high paid, high skilled jobs. So, and that's a fantastic thing for our young people to potentially be involved with. But it, it, yeah, and so, you know, these young people could be the highly skilled work, uh, uh, workforce that are going to produce that. But also I think there's an element of that personal development, that ability to express something about the time. And I think that those uh, young people the, as artists will say that much of what they made uh, over the past couple of years has been very much about their experience during uh, you know massive period of disruption in our country and their ability to bounce back and make creative things out about them is a huge tribute to them uh, so that's a, a, a fantastic thing. And something that strikes me having sort of spoken to you over a number of years about um, the young people who are creating art at the QE is the strength the consistency of um, of the quality of the things that are produced by the young people locally, and um, how how does that happen? I don't know. Is there something in the water? Is it the landscape? Is it the f fantastic people who live in Hexham? I think that sometimes uh, uh, you know we're described maybe as a bit of a backwater. Newcastle is the creative hub, you know, and there's a truth in that. But the reality is, the young people who come to our high school and the young people who come to all the high schools in the valley are a fantastic bunch. You know, credit to their parents and credit to the environment that they they grow up in. That they uh, are full of beans and our job is basically to, to help them make something out of that and I think it's this exhibition says that we've we've succeeded but thank you for those comments uh, Peter I mean uh, um, you know let's hope that we can carry on uh, delivering for for our young people and families so the exhibition is open now? So it's open now until um, the 18th uh, of July when we have to pack everything down. It's our, it's our school holidays, so no comments about that, please. But uh, I think they're looking forward to it and they've earned it. Uh, but please come along before that and enjoy looking at the work and, uh, uh, um, and appreciating our young people. Thanks very much. Well, thanks very much for talking to Hexham TV. Thank you.